Good evening, family. God bless you. It is so great to be here with you all. And as we get to this message this evening, there are two things we're going to start off with. And the first one, I believe you know I'm going to say it, but one, I love you. And number two, let's pray. Father, today in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you this evening for this word. We thank you for your rest. We thank you, Father, for being with us in the presence with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you are doing to transform our lives this evening. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Tonight we're going to begin a course in the Bible. You're going to need your Bible and pen and paper so that you can be writing these things down. We have established in Scripture that He has given us rest. We can identify that all we have is from the Lord, and the Lord only gives us good gifts. Now, as we are moving in the fullness of this, I want you to be turning to, let me see which scripture it is. I've got quite a few scripture that I want to get into tonight so that we can tie in all of these pieces. And so we're going to be in the book of Matthew, starting off in Matthew chapter 11. Now, we've been here before, but this is where I'm just setting the stage for us to be recognizing something, okay? So it's in Matthew, should be Matthew in let me see 20 there's 10 there we go the pages were stuck together 1128 I believe that might be my scripture but let me make certain that I am where I need to be Matthew yes Matthew eleven twenty eight, and it reads this come unto me all ye that are labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest okay we recognize that one rest is a gift and that that's the previous message if you've not listened to the previous message the gift of rest please listen to that one because that is really setting the stage that he gives us rest you will not receive a gift typically from someone that you don't know now that sounds a little bit strange although there are, yes, those of us that like to give gift strangers things, and we, we get this. But when it comes to the gift of rest, it is for us by Christ that gives us access to the Father. It is only He that has the power and authority in His name of who He is by God, the ability to give us rest. I'm setting the stage with this so you can understand where that rest needs to be appropriated and what happens when it is not. So we're establishing that rest is only from Christ, in Christ, by Christ. Now, I want to take you to the book of Romans. Okay, so I'm setting this all up for us to be recognizing what the fullness is that I'm going to share with you. So in the book of Romans chapter 7, in verse 22, and I'm going to give you these these scriptures, so we're tying some things together with the rest as our foundation. Scripture tied together so that I can then show you the diagram of how it all works when it works, when you work it. So 722, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man or the inner man. So we're moving into the inner man man and I'm going to show you what that looks like but that is where that is where we are delighting when I delight in the law of God after the inner man it's the inner man it's the inner not the outer but the inner that's the first part now turn with me to Ephesians and it's in Ephesians 3:16 
Now I'm going to start in 14 as it reads, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That is the inner man. Okay, so that's two. Now, come with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. There is a difference of the inner man and the outer man. Okay? So I'm gonna we're gonna go through this and I've got this diagram to show you with my extra notes here. But what I want you to see is this. When we begin to look, and I'm just going to move this in so you can see this. The inner man is the spirit. The outer man is the soul. And the outermost man is the body. Okay, so we have the spirit, we have the soul, and we have the body. If you notice you will see that the body is the largest, the temple, then we have the soul, and then we have the spirit. Now, for sake of this, the spirit is, is the smallest, the inner man. It is the smallest. This is where rest is given, okay? So I'm sharing this with you so you can see and you'll have an understanding of how this works in your own life. So that way, when I tell you rest is a destination or rest is a place, yes, it is in here. Most people are not getting that. So when we look at how people are living, they're living here all here trying to resolve problems here the problem with this is that the power of the holy spirit indwells here so when people say a christian cannot get a demon that is incorrect why because it resides here they say well you know if the holy spirit indwells within me then a then the demon cannot dwell the demon is not dwelling in the holy spirit the demon is dwelling in the soul of the man, okay, or the soul of, of the woman, of the person, but being biblically correct here. So why is this important? Because when you see this, here's what happens. This reflects this, reflects this, okay? So we have to get and start working here. Anything you do here and here, it's not gonna it's not gonna last here is where your rest is so what ends up happening ooh sorry what ends up happening is that people try to make Jesus operate here make Jesus the homie but the problem with that is that Jesus and God will we'll just take this that God and you've heard me say this numerous times God is not mental God's not mental. God is not the one operating in our soul level. God is spirit. We have to gain the mind of Christ. Many are operating in a way where they're trying to make Jesus come down and have the carnal kind of conversation about, yo, what's up and what's up and do, 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 whatever they're talking about. No, we have to be gaining the mind of Christ. We're growing. The Bible says that in this life you will lose it to gain it. Well, if it feels like, and I remember the very first time that, that I, I experienced this, it was in 2006, and I was in Corpus Christi, and this was the testimony that God sent me there, and I drove there, no map, sight unseen, and, and in this place, hurricanes coming, and, and I remember telling my Bible teacher, I said, I feel like I'm losing my mind. And he says, great. 
the best place you could be in because now you're gaining the mind of Christ. Many of you don't want to lose your mind. You're just pumping up your mind with your Mensa IQ, not moving to a spiritual cue. Okay, so there's a, there's a difference in your IQ and your SQ, spiritual quotient. Okay, so we want to be getting away from here and here. But what happens is, is that the more that we're here, the less that we're here. The more that we're here, the less that we're operating here. Rest only comes here. If you were searching and seeking trying to get rest here, you never will. Because as I've gotten through to this, and if I just read this particular one, that in 2 Corinthians 4, what did I read? 16. Oh, that's 5. Here it is. For which we faint not, for though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So, the inward man is, is what's renewed. This all is perishing. I might say look in the mirror, but I don't want to tell you to do that because then some of you might be really agreeing and then we don't want to do that either. So, we know that all of this by the filth of this world is, is filth. It's uncleanliness. Look at the air. Look at the water. Look at all the stuff. We could, we could all be focused on that. But this is renewed each day, day after day. If you are not focusing on regenerating or moving in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you have wasted your time and your life. It's a total waste because there's, there's nothing to be gained in the soul. It's, all, it's in the spirit, in the indwelling of the spirit in the inner man. I feel like I have to sneeze. Excuse me. So we have to be focused on the inner man. Now, what does this mean? In the inner man is, is where the spirit is. This is where your spirit communes with the spirit of God. For those that say the Holy Spirit's not for today, I am at a loss because the Holy Spirit is in every single book of the Bible, and the Bible is for today. And so when we say the Holy Spirit's not for today, or that the apostles and prophets are not for today, well, now we've made an idol of the pastor. We've lost the counsel and the, and the oversight that the, that the apostles and the prophets bring forth, and so you start to see the bigger picture. But then when we look and we see, well, I don't believe in this, the Spirit only does this and the Spirit this, well, now what's happened is that we've lost all power, the dunamis. There's, there's, if you reject where the power is, there's no power. And you would be operating out of here, which is why so many of you were tired. People often question and ask me, I don't know how you get it done. Well, you should, <laughs> is what I say. You, you should because it's not me. It is the inner man. It is the spirit of God moving through me that affords me the strength and endurance to continue to endure through all of what it is that I have, that I have endured, that God has made the way and he is my strength. So when we are trying to move here, guess what? You're doing it in your strength. Human will, my will, my way, my drive. Look at me. It's all flesh. Filthy, filthy, filthy. This is where the mind, the will, and the emotions are. So let me put this here. I will put this here. Spirit. And then this is the mind the will, and the emotions, okay? So when we look at this, we have, we have, helps if my pen goes all the way through. Okay, bink, bink, fix my arrows here. I really need my big wall whiteboards, I'm just saying, and lighting and camera crew. That's what we need here. Now, here's the deal. When we look at this, the spirit, so your spirit, the spirit of God, okay? The, the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. Who is talking to you? Go back to Genesis 3. Who told you you were naked? Who is telling you to eat that at 2 in the morning? 
when you get up in the morning or, or if you're already up in the morning, late at night, whichever we call it, and you're rummaging in the fridge, who's telling you to be in there? Who? Who was telling you? Who? 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 If it's not God, you need to start questioning. So, we see here many are operating out of this way. They're operating out of their flesh. Their spirit, their emo their, not their spirit, but their mind, their will, and their emotions. Trying and striving and perfecting and doing and doing and doing. Thinking that achieving is going to get something. No, it will get you going around and around and around and around and around. No rest. There's no rest in the soul. How do we know this? Look at society. How else do we know this? Look at the body. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little overview, but I'm going to be diving much more in depth in this arena. When we look at the health of the inner man, an inner man at rest and at peace operates very different than one that is, that is controlled by the mind, the will, and the emotions. The body reacts chemically to this and this. How do we know that this is not raining? Because the people in the church are just as sick as the people in the world. You, dear brother, dear sister, should not be sick. If you're sick, you should not be. You should never get sick. There should be no sickness, illness, or diseases that come upon you. Ever. And if they ever do, you go back to Deuteronomy, which I'm going to be tackling a lot of this stuff because I'm seeing and hearing so many testimonies of, of my brothers and sisters that are, that are operating in a place of sickness. Autoimmune disorders, this type of disease, this type of this, this type of that. That, that is very clearly telling me this is raining and not this. When there is rest, there, are, there, there is access granted and access not granted and things that are able to enter in. And I'm going to dive into a lot more of that and how it all works. But for the sake of this today, I want you to recognize that your body is a reflection of this or this, period. Most that are operating out of the mind, the will, and the emotions are carrying it. There is no rest in this place. So the mind, the will, and the emotions, what we need to be working on is this. Many of you are operating where your flesh is this big and your spirit's this big. Well, the more time that you spend in the spirit, in, in the time with God, this should be growing bigger to where your flesh is growing this big. Okay, so we have an imbalance. We have a big, massive imbalance, which is demonstrating that there is lack of peace and rest. So we say, what was finished on the cross? Yes, except here's the issue. Many people are believing that the cross is just a, a magic wand, but there's still sin. So obviously, yes, it was finished on the cross. However... You still have to be moving in the spirit, not the flesh. So you can claim whatever you want, but you can obviously see, is it working? If it's not working, that's because the rest and the power that comes from the relationship with the Lord is not operational. This is going to separate this here and this here, the stark difference is the relationship and one is in religion and one is not so how do we know this the body is a reflection of the spirit and the soul when the spirit and the soul are not in congruency with one another we can go into amos 3 3 how can two walk in agreement how can how can they be divided and walk in agreement well, if you are in not in agreement with yourself, then your body suffers the consequences of it. It all comes back to being at peace in yourself with the Spirit of God. So, what happens here is we've got a breach. 
the spirit is not operational. It's there. Okay, so we recognize yes, we have a spirit, but we don't know how to have a spiritual relationship with the spirit God because we're trying to make God a soul being. God is not a soul being. God is a spiritual being. God is God. When we don't want to grow up, we want to play religion, that's where the breed starts to happen. So what happens is that everything turns God into a soul being and we treat God as though he's some earthly being and then we get frustrated and then what happens? Well, then people start to blame God for their problems. God's not your problem. Then you blame other people for your problems. The people aren't your problem. And then you blame the devil for your problems. Well, the devil is not your problem either. It sounds very religious and it sounds very righteous, but it's hollow. It's not holy. It's hollow. Why? Because you haven't done the work to regenerate and be regenerated and be maturing in the inner man. If all you ever focus on is here, you will only be always on the perimeter in the outer man. And this will look like it. How does it look like it? Bitter people look like it. Unforgiving people look like it. And I don't have any of the pictures, but I do, but not today. But I look like one of those kids lost on a milk carton back in the day. And, and it, I mean, it's bad. I would just work that out. Would just trust me on that. It's like the, the sadness is just over. Great skin. But the sadness is just so the darkness in my eyes, almost an espresso color at that particular time. Everything that is in turns inward. Okay, so the body looks like it. Bitter people look like it. Angry people look like it. Stressed people look like it. Your body, you become, if you are not aware of it, people often become one with the emotion that they carry, not realizing. Then they say, well, I'm angry. Well, now you made the emotion your identity. See, and I'm going to be getting into some of this as well because we got to get free. Excuse me. So as you're moving forward, you start to see the people look like what they look like based upon where they're at. You have to move to get in agreement. This has to be an agreement. When the body and the when the body and the spirit and the soul are in agreement, now we're moving. The problem is that many focus on the outward. I need this, I need this, I need this, I need more clothes, I need more this, I need this, I need a little nip tuck and a suck, and I need this, and I need this. And it doesn't ever solve the problem. Because what's manifested within you, that, that that you have not dealt with to be delivered and healed from, is what is taking over. So it doesn't matter how many surgeries you have or how many, whatever you do to yourself, you still, the, the body will still chemically react to what is not dealt with, what is not healed. So we have to come back and say, okay, well, this is what I have to get to. This is work. Because what we're doing is here, in here, we're taking responsibility. Oh, maybe I am just a bitter whatever. Hmm. Maybe I am just angry. Maybe it's not fair. Well, let me just be clear. Life is not fair. Well, you know, this, correct, and... You can either be bitter or better. You can be a victim or you can be a victor, but not twice, not both at the same time. You can stay in the pit or you can get out of the pit and get to the palace. I had to, I had to leave the pit. Didn't like it. It's cramped. I'm, I don't like being claustrophobic and I don't like smelly things and I'm allergic to terrible. So I'm allergic to cheap and ugly and bad chocolate. Get out. I'm in the palace because that is where we need to be moving. All this stuff here that people make their lives, your lives are being gone away by what? By, by what? We've been in this series for how many months? A lot. And I'm not even through. I mean, who, who knew? Each, each day when I read the scripture, all I find is rest, rest. I mean, it's coming at me. I mean, it's, God's got a sense of humor. I have to really say, God really has a sense of humor with this entire study in in what I mean I just love God he just his sense of humor is just and never tell him what you don't want because I did that once I didn't like Ford and I did not like gray and well back in the day guess what I was given a white Ford with gray interior yeah I learned my lesson I appreciate I, I appreciate <laughs> and guess what it's still first on race day 
So, I'll go with it. And you know what? The other card that I had, the Break the Man's Wallet card, that was in the shop more often than anything ever, ever, ever. So, be mindful of, of what you are speaking because the truth will set you free. So when we look here, this is, this is where rest is. So in this series, I mean, I just laugh at, at, at what God is doing in all of this. So the power of the Holy Spirit indwells within the Spirit. You have to build up the spirit man. You have to build up the inner man. You have to be working with the Holy Spirit and in conversation with the Holy Spirit in the inner man. Not just about the name it and claim it that feeds the soul. This is the problem that I see with so many is that, and I didn't know what the name it and claim it was until I moved to religious land. And, and then it was like, wow. And that seems to be a question. Well, did you name it, claim it? Well, who doesn't know? I mean, I didn't know, but then I quick study. But here was here was the thing about it is that is that most people that are naming it and claiming it and spitting it and getting it are not doing it in such things that oh today I declare that I am a holy woman of God today I declare that I walk in discernment. No, it's it's things that fit here, not here. This is where you have got to get yourself. Because this is where life is. Rest is in here. Many of you want to be here, but what's happening is this is so big. Notice that this circle is larger than this one. This is so big, and this is the work. This is the work that it will take to overcome all of this. All of this. And it kind of looks like this, too. Like all this, it's all noise. And everything is connected to everything is connected to everything, especially for women. Because women's brains, everything is connected. Every thought is connected to a thought, is connected to an emotion, is connected to another thought, is connected to another thought. Men can have one thought and it's separate from all the other thoughts because it's only one thought. That's why men do one thing at a time very well. One thought, I'm watching the game. That's what I'm doing. So he says, he's watching the game. He's not going to watch the game and take out the trash, ladies. So for, for many, the, everything here, though, the soul is all connected. If this is where you live, you will be the Israelites going around and around and around and around and end up in the same place. Many, and I see this quite often, many spend their lives going forward in a circle and they don't know it they come back at the same place I'm like we already had this conversation we had this conversation we've had this conversation but because the same steps were taken guess what definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results if you do not get beyond the soul or your flesh to get here you will forever be living here why is that a sad shame? Because this is where I believe religion is. Religion is all outward. It's all outward appearance. It's all for show. It's all just propagated in the sayings and the lingo and the this and the that. It's fake because there's no power in religion. The power is in the spirit. If you are living in religion, what's happened is you've forsaken the Holy Spirit without recognizing it, so I'm not condemning you, but I'm saying that what happens here is that there's a forsaking of what's here. Totally missed it, wouldn't even know that it's there. See, rest. You can't get to a place that you don't know exists, rest. If you don't know that it's there, you won't ever get there. You won't even do the work to get there. When you recognize it's there, oh, I need to be there. I need to do whatever it takes to get there because that is for me and that is where life is and I wanna be living in the fullness of that. But if you don't know what's here and this is all you know, like this, if this is it, level up, sister, level up, brother, because the best is there. And the best is yet to come, and the best is yet to come is here. So most live led by their, by their mind, their will, and the emotions, wanting to say, oh, this is of God. I can certainly tell you that if you say and you try to get me to believe that something is of God and it doesn't even line up with Scripture, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. You're under a strong delusion. And I would be so bold and have been so bold to say that because it needs to be said not to come against the person but to be breaking down these delusions and these strongholds that are on, that people get themselves under. Thinking that it's God. What leads you to believe that something not of God would be of God when it's not even in the scripture? If God's word is not aligning with scripture, then there's an issue because God doesn't go against himself. So when people are believing, well, you know, it's just God's will. 
No, it's not. It's God's will for me to be sick. Actually, no, it's not. That's a twist of the scripture as well. How do we know that? Save that. We'll be coming to that. Because it's God's will that you don't get sick. So if you're sick, that tells us here, something here is not being dealt with. Because now we're trying to deal with it over here and not here. The only way that you will get through to anything is in here, but you've got to come through here. What happens when we start to move here is that this is where rest is. The body is a reflection of this, and the body is a reflection of this. So you have to pay attention, what am I reflecting? The body absorbs everything. Every thought. This is why we started weeks ago, what, three, four weeks ago, on the thoughts. The thoughts rest. Are we resting in our thoughts? Or are your thoughts making you restless? Now I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'll show you something else. Six seventeen. Hold on. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. Six. I'm in a different. I'm in a different King James, so my numbers are a little bit different, but they're still here. Um. I'm going to start in six sixteen. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. Recognize that. Two join as one become one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So, you see here, one flesh. So many of you are one with your flesh and not in the spirit. So let me read 17 again. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Why? Because his spirit is with your spirit. So what does this mean? This means when you get the full recognition, when we say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Well, if he is in me, why are you not living like it? Because you've not gotten there yet. You've not realized, one, who really died for you. Two, that he really did die for you. And three, that it was for you and that he indwells in you. When you recognize who is indwelling within you, guess what? You will pay attention to it. This here will not be what rules you. Because you will get that this is greater than this. When this is what's greater, your mind, will, and your emotions, flipping out, doing all kinds of stuff that people do, then you will be moving in a way where this is, is the greatest. You will be moving in a way where this does not control your life. You will be moving in a way that regardless of your circumstances, you will know that he will make the way. And then you will have these testimonies like I do. Hopefully you won't have all of like what I do. I mean, I'm the one teaching this stuff because guess what? I got so many testimonies of the stuff I've had to walk through, knee deep mud to get out. And I have to walk through it in, and it feels at times like slow motion, but that's how I can break all of this down in micro steps. I can see it from a 30,000 feet above and below because I've walked through this stuff. It's not just I read it in a book and stayed at a Holiday Inn. I have walked through it to help you because there's two ways you will learn from your mistakes or your mentors. Well, if you want to take twice as long and, and deal with twice as much stuff that you shouldn't have to deal with, then go make your mistakes and go at it. But if you want to, if you want to get it and fast track it, then you learn from the mentors. It's the same thing. I tell my college students this, you have two ways to learn. Many people just don't, they're unteachable. So the unteachable struggle here and they live their life struggling because they're too proud and arrogant to, to sit down and to become teachable. So you can't teach them. So they fuss and fight here. This is not where you want to be. Because life is ticking by and you don't have time to fuss. You need your time to get to here. What happens then, we see, we see it as it reads, He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So now this is one you are co-heirs with Christ Jesus, as it is said, in the Spirit. The inheritance that God has for you is in the Spirit in accordance with 1 Peter. So, we are now able to rest in Him, not in the soul. But, 
Oh, excuse me. But what happens is this. As you get to rest in your inner man, the soul is at peace and the body begins to be transformed. What do I mean by this? Your soul will never be able to bring peace to the inner man. It works out back, it works outward, inward out. Many of you are trying to solve outward problems uh, or spiritual problems outwardly and it will never work. You cannot resolve spiritual problems in the flesh. Spiritual problems are only resolved spiritually. You've got to get that. When you get that, then you will understand the, the whole mm, the whole fullness of God's word. I want to choose my words carefully in this. This is where things are resolved. So for those that reject the Holy Spirit, well, you got no hope. You got nothing. Because, because your, only, your only way of solving anything is in your intellect. And you can't, you have no access to the inner man because the inner man is by the spirit. And if the spirit's not for today and you reject the Holy Spirit and the things of the spirit, well, have fun because there's nowhere for you to go beyond yourself and your own thinking. So you will forever be trapped and stuck in your flesh, in your soul. As you move here and you deal with here, then this will be shrinking and your body will be reflecting it. Because a body at rest and restless both look like it. So what happens is that you won't need to play religion. You, you won't need to be doing all this. You won't need to be going and seeking and thinking, I need to go to this event. I need this revival, this revival, this revival. I'm going to tell you something. No, you don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because that's seeking after the soul. And, and it's interesting because... If, if, and I'm not, and understand what I'm going to say as I'm saying this, people go back to Azusa, people go to, go to Toronto revivals. We need these today. We need these today. For what? For what? If, if we were all operating here, it would already be there. When you're chasing an event, then you're chasing it in the soul. But if it doesn't penetrate through the soul of the spirit, you wasted your time. Because all it did was feed the flesh. Again, feeding the flesh. Some of the greatest moments that I've had have not been at any event. The most life transformative are in my prayer closet. That is where everything begins. Just as they say that, that all marriages begin in the bedroom. What happens in the bedroom? Never defile the bedroom of the bed because, because that is the outflow of a marriage. The prayer closet is the outflow of your relationship with the Lord. So when we need to go out, outward for an outflow to get the inward, we're only filling the outward and the inward is still not being fulfilled. How do we know this? Because if all of these things we're working, and I'm not saying do not do not gather with the brethren. That's not what I'm saying. But when there's a reliance on these things to fill us, if they worked, then all of our nations that host them would all be very different. The people would be different. The health issues in the church and the abortion rates and the rate of divorce in the church would not be what it is today, which is very telling that we're missing this. So the whole body would be looking different. So we can take this, we can take this individually and we can take it corporately as a body. So when we begin to look at where we are, we have to get here because this is where we're joined in the spirit and it is a spirit of rest. My peace I give you. I did not come to give as the world gives for the world get, doesn't give anything. What does the world give you? Heartache and bad credit. What, what, what is it that, that Christ died to give you peace? Not to give you religion, but to give you everything you need here. When, when you begin to see what Paul is saying, and then you start to understand, well, it was Paul that was shipwrecked. It was Paul that was in prison. It was Paul that was tortured and beaten. And it was Paul that had the, the messenger of Satan in the, in the thorn. We, we begin to see all these things that Paul had, but yet he still knew the secret of being content. You know why? With much and with little. Because he operated here. If you are not content, that's because you are here. 
It's nothing to do with other people where they don't make me happy. It's not their job to. Nobody, God did not create people to make you happy. Let's just be clear. He created you for His pleasure and His delight so you could fulfill His purpose. God's purpose in your life is not to be a happy people for everyone else to suck the energy from. It doesn't even make sense, but a lot of people live trying to make everybody else happy. And let me tell you, that's a terrible goal to have. <laughs> terrible goal. If your goal is to make everyone happy, you will fail. <laughs> Just just cluing you in on this. You will never be able to reach that goal because nobody ever collectively always will be happy. And then those people that come forth that are happy, they, somebody will be unhappy about the fact that somebody's happy because that's what happens. Happy people can be happy, but unhappy people will always find something to be unhappy about. Why? Because they're here. This, again, is the movement. So, turn with me to 1 Samuel, and it's one or the other, 1 Samuel, might be, let me see here. I know the scripture, but I wanted to read it to you. I will find it. One second. Okay, so it's not that. Oh, I'm still in 1 Samuel. It's either 16.7 or 17.6.17. Not there. 617. That's the tabernacle. It's in one of the Samuels, and the scripture reads this, that it is man looks at the outward appearance, but it is God that looks at the heart. So why is this important? Because, and I want to just look up one more scripture. It's in San, it's in the Well, that's the scripture. Let me, 16, 7, 17, 6, 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel. It's in there. God, man looks at outward appearance. God looks at the heart. Okay, why is this important? Because God looks at the heart. Man looks at outward appearance. So long as you are looking at outward appearance, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be starving yourself to death. Literally, you will be starving yourself. Many of you are in, in a ways spiritually, okay? But you probably are naturally, but then also or in, in the natural, but then also here. Man looks at outward appearance, keeping you looking at the soul level, keeping you forever looking here and here. God looks at the heart. You must remember this because as you're going forward, rest is between you and the Lord. So when you are moving in this place of rest, guess what will happen? When you're at a place of rest and you see other people, you will penetrate through all of this. You won't be focused on, oh, look at their cellulite. Even Britney Spears at the top of her peak of her career has cellulite. I mean, really? really? And, like, oh, the value of a woman is based upon cellulite. Well, then we've got a whole lot of value going on, right, ladies? I mean, come on, right? But, but a lot of people get caught here. When you were here, you can look beyond that. You can look beyond all of this to see. If we were, if we were all here in rest, guess what would happen? We all would be able to sit with the woman at the well. We would be all able to sit with, with the people that, that have mohawks and tattoos and gauges, who are some of my best friends. And actually, I told you, the church I used to go to, I was the only one that didn't have a mohawk, a tattoo, or gauges in my ears. And the worship was phenomenal. All oh, the worship was phenomenal. Precious men and women of God, I tell you. And there I was. <laughs> And it was so, it was so awesome. It was a Sunday night church. And, you know, they created the church because people looked at them here. 
not here. The kindest woman, and it was, I mean, it didn't matter, a corporate body of believers. You see, if we all were here, we could sit with anyone, anywhere, at any time. Black or white, Muslim, Asian, Jew, Buddhist, Hindu, Baptist, Second Baptist, Pentecostal, whatever they are, we could be here. You know why? Because this doesn't matter. Because this isn't where it's at either. Because this, we would be seeing right where we need to be seeing. We would be walking Christ-like, having compassion on people, loving the hell out of them so they too would be moving in a place where we all are desiring to get to in the things of the Lord. This is where when we start working on this area here, we can be moving in that place to be moving to where the things that we make something really aren't. We could be moving in a place of rest that, that we can just love people. We can be moving to see that, you know what, they need as much grace as we do. We could be moving to recognize, as I go back to Romans 7, that I can go back and, and I can look at this and see that, that it is the indwelling of, of the inner man that is removing in this that we're not, we're not caught up in, in these things. That when we read it here, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man my inner man this is why you've heard me say david they say david had a heart after god yes but he was after god's heart my inner man is seeking after the inner man the inner god in the inner sanctuary where there is rest where there is life that where there is peace in this filthy world that this world and what is happening is not my focus because I'm here and he's got me. He's got me in the palm of his hand. I'm the apple of his eye. You're the apple of his eye. That there's rest. Thank you, Lord, regardless of my circumstances, regardless of what's happening in the world. Regardless, Lord, thank you. That in you, there's peace. In you, there's rest. So I pray that, that as you really as you really see this, that you that you start moving here. This is your target. This is your target with the Lord. It's not about anybody else. It's not about what people are doing or are not doing. The people. It's human nature. People are gonna make mistakes. I mean, it is what it is. People are people. But as you move, you say, Lord, this is my time with you now. We don't need to focus on anything else, Lord. This is me and you. Heal me in my inner man. Talk to me in my inner man. Move in my spirit, Lord. Reveal your ways to me, Lord. Reveal yourself to me. By your word. By who you are as I delight in you. This is where you've got to be. So if you're looking for a place to go to, for, for the weekend, if you're watching this at morning, noon, or night, where your next place is before the Lord. Set up your prayer closet. Set everything up in a way that, that you get there, that you move in that place, that you are in that place, that you work on here with Him, and everything else will sort itself out for within you is the wellspring of life. Rest comes within, in Christ. Come before him and he will give you rest. And that rest is in here. Let it, let it saturate you. Meditate on it. Let it be what you are absorbing. That is a message for today. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for every single person who hears this, that they receive it, that, that, they are, that they are having those conversations with you, that we break the soul ties to the soul, but to, the, to religion and the outward appearance, that we come before you, Father, right where we are, that it's not about what we do, it's about who we are in you. So we thank you, Father, tonight for rest. 
overflow us in it, saturate us, help us to be saturated in you and with you. Father, I thank you for these precious people that you brought forth. I pray, Father, a special blessing over all of them who were, who were receiving this prayer. May you just touch them right, right where they are. May you just reveal to them how much they are loved, how much they are cherished, how much you have in store for them. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one of them. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for doing a new thing in their lives. And may it be for your glory. I thank you, Father, for these things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is just so good. And his righteousness is amazing. And there's so much that I know that the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you about. Receive him. And if you were still here and you've not yet received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. You know, we're in uncertain times, but the one thing that is certain is that Jesus Christ loves you. And the other thing is that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. And so all you need to do is just ask him to be the center of your life. Just talk to him. Lord, I need you. I'm so broken and lost and lonely and I can't do this and I don't know what to do. It seems helpless. I need help. Will you be my Lord and Savior? Lord, I, I, I need forgiveness. I, I, I made a mess. I just, I, I just, I'm sorry. I repent, whatever. Lord, I'm, I just need you. He will be there. Will you receive him? It really is that simple and so life-changing. And you know, we do pray every single day, every day. Eight years every day we pray. And I invite you to join us. You just need to dial 214-586-0411 at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You just dial the number. We're a body of believers that come together to pray. We receive a refreshing from the Lord. And I invite you to join us. It's fellowship. We all need it. And I invite you. You can visit us at julieblairministries.org. There's a lot of content there that will help you grow in the Lord. There's a lot of things that, that are subject matter of prayer and knowing the Holy Spirit that I believe will help you to know Him and to grow in these times. And if you do have a prayer request, I would love to pray for you. Will you please just post your prayer request? You can also send send an email. You can find all that at julieblairministries.org and I would just love to pray for you. So whatever that prayer request is, I know it's not easy and sometimes we do need somebody that that is that is there with us. And so just send a prayer request if you have one. And if you have a testimony too, I'd love to hear those. So I pray as you go forward today that, that you know just how great God is and that you know that, that as you go forward, your best is yet to come. And of course, as we go out, I'm going to tell you that Jesus loves you, but I'm also going to tell you that I love you too. Be blessed and stay faithful. Bye-bye.